Uh, does anybody else have any comments or questions? Just keep <clears throat> Okay, so now we're moving over to the public comment. The same rules apply. Let me back the, the video. First of all, uh, can I, am I going to get a response? Is there going to be a decision made about elementary class coverage? Teachers giving up a prep period to cover rather than pulling people from providing services to our kids. Am I going to get closure on that tonight? It's been going on for two, three months now. My teachers are waiting for a response. Yes or no? Call the call tomorrow. Call the call me tomorrow? Okay. Uh, regarding the FERPA, are my teachers, I'm not going to go through all the emails. I have them all here. I have all the proof I need right here. I'd like to see it, can see it. I have all the emails that clearly support what I've been saying again since this occurred. Okay? All my five teachers, all I've asked for is an expression that an error was made, there was no FERPA violation, a retraction, and an apology. Jesus, I, I, don't, see what, I don't see what the big deal is. There was a meeting today, Dr. Losing, myself. Okay, that's what I'm asking. So that was taking care of it. My teacher's going to receive a retraction and an apology that there was no FERPA violation. There was a meeting today face-to-face. -face. Face -to -face. Did she voluntary? Face-to-face? -face? Correct. Mm -hmm. All five. All three of them attended. They all the five were. The other two and them. All five yeah, were asked you. to come. They could Appreciate not all come. It. Thank you. There was a meeting today. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> just to clarify a couple of things, Mr. Millman, about the Promethean boards. Uh, they will. They, uh, you were asked a specific question: Were they not viable? And you said none of them were viable. Uh, maybe you don't know this. Many of the Promethean boards that were laying out behind the school and every one of our buildings, thrown into dumpsters, were working the week before. They were thrown, discarded from the rooms, and thrown out. They were all working. They were working just as well as mine has, that I've had for a number of years. I'm asking this question again. It makes no sense to me. It doesn't make sense to most people I talk to. It's common sense. You have a teacher in this room. You have a teacher in this room. You have this teacher with nothing. You have this teacher with a working Promethean board. They bring new boards in. They take the working Promethean board and throw it in the garbage, put the new smart board in, and the teacher in this room still doesn't have any technology. That's the facts. How many rooms did that take place? I don't know. If it was one, it's one too many. But it's many. I had hands go up galore at Duffield the other day. High school teachers. High school teachers, it happened to many of them. The bottom line is you had kids, students, 16 years old, saying what a waste of money. They were taking the pictures. For crying out loud, how, do, if you're going to do something like that, put the stuff in a dumpster neatly for crying out loud. People are here, taxpayers are talking about money. We have thousands of dollars to just throw away. We couldn't get two, we were lucky we got $2,000 for a club. We're throwing away hundreds of working Promethean boards. It's shameful. Donate them to somebody. Do something with them. But don't sit here and tell us that they were not viable, because that's not the truth. Your time's up, Tony. And I'd just like to know if we found out from the last meeting, if I could beg your indulgence, okay? Did we ever find out who the administrator was, okay, all right, who told Miss Kennedy that a person was guaranteed a job in September? It's unethical, it's irresponsible. Did we ever get an answer to that? We're going back into executive session. Please, because I have my own uh, hypothesis about what happened. Okay. okay? And I know who it came from. Thank you, Tony. You all? Uh, Gail, Eileen? Gail, there's a first one. I have two, two questions on two unrelated topics. I'm, I'm very disturbed by what Mrs. Kennedy just said about asking for resumes of applicants for job applications. Whether you've seen them in the past or not is irrelevant to me. It is not a board function. It is, it is. It is not a board function for the board to review individual resumes and applications and qualifications. We have a director of personnel. We have interview committees that consist of teachers and administrators whose job it is to go through rewriting samples, listen and, and view demos, 
of, of lesson plans. It is not a board function, and this board is not qualified. No, no, I don't mean any disrespect to the teachers and the administrator on the board. It is not a board function for the board to review individual applications. I have, personal experience, I have personal experience with board members trying to remove my teaching daughter from a classroom. It is not a board's responsibility to do that. It's the board's responsibility to vote the day that they're being approved. It is our responsibility when we see nepotism or feel like nepotism or cronyism is going on that we this is look, we're not, no, Those we're not who live in glass the, houses shouldn't throw shit. We're not looking at the resumes. I'm looking at what, what the professionals have to say about these people. Please not don't stand on a pedestal in front of me. Please. The Board of Education's responsibility is to take the recommendation from the superintendent of schools as to who is on the personnel approval list. And that, I assume, comes from the director of personnel, who's had an interview committee and viewed lesson plans and watched demonstrations in a classroom. That is not the board's responsibility to view an individual resume of an applicant and to decide if that applicant is qualified. The board is not experts in disciplines. They're not experts in subjects or special education. I'm sorry, I disagree with you. And I disagree with this administration that cows down to a board member who asks a question. Actually, I, I, I hear what you're saying, but Mrs. Kennedy's request is not inconsistent with a specific board policy. It is not a board's responsibility. I'm sorry, I disagree. And I will have, I will have more to say on that subject. My second question is regarding this budget brochure. In this section of the flyer, I'm a little confused because it talks about a referendum that was approved by voters in March of 2014. And in the same sentence, it talks about the board authorizing a transfer of capital to that fund in 2016-17. So how I'm reading it is that the board has already authorized $3.7 million out of next year's budget that the voters haven't even voted on yet and you're putting it into a reserve fund. You're shaking your head now. Right. Okay. That last part I shook my head now. Okay, tell me All the rest of it is correct. There is a budget line item in the 16-17 budget, which the board has adopted that budget. It's going to the voters on May 17th. There is a line item to transfer $3.7 million to the capital fund for the specific use for the 2014 capital project because we went out to bid. The bids did not come in within budget, which is precluding us from being able to make the heating and ventilation corrections that we need to under that proposed project. That approved project, it's not proposed. So, I'm trying to understand. If I go over my time, I'm sorry, but so you're saying that $3.7 million of a, of a budget that has not even been approved yet by the voters is going to be used to pay expenses or projects that were approved previously that came in over budget, right? Which have not been awarded because they came in over budget. That's correct. So, so the any project was approved. The, there was a delay at the state which contributed to the prices coming in inflated over what their estimates were. Also, there are variables in the trades. It, you, it's difficult for the engineers and the architects to estimate the cost, but you know, sometimes the, it's, it's underestimated, and that's what happened. So well, let me that, ask you that you. is a line item in the budget to supplement the previously approved, voter approved project to do all the things that are listed there in that section of the brochure. Now many of these things I know have already been started or some of them completed. Some. So so as a taxpayer, you're telling me that you don't need $184 million to run the educational program. You only need 180 plus because 3.7 million is already going to capital projects. Right. It's it's itemized in this budget what everything will go to. I mean, it, it's 8 to 17, 18 pages of 
what's being budgeted and for what purpose, including on the last page, the transfer to capital of three point seven million dollars to do those projects, which are also important. Which were fun which you know I thought have been funded all along from the capital improvement fund. Am they I wrong? are when you go out for a bond referendum, you're asking for certain projects to be done uh, with a price tag that's estimated by the architect. You go out, you get voter approval, we did that. You go up to the state and you get, get the state's approval, they review everything. You know, so at that time, we then, don't take into account the, the year and a half that it takes for the approval process? We don't it, build it that took in. much longer than that, but yes, that is considered. And that's estimated by a professional estimator that the architect retains. And that estimate was was wrong because or, or didn't come out accurately compared to uh, the bids that we did receive because of variations in the trades, the materials, timing, all of those things. Okay, thank you. Um, Again, this is, you know, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, it's still today. You had, um, on the last meeting, you had talked about the, I think we called the report card. A report card. So the property tax report card. Yes. Okay. So the 180 million to the 184, and I think I clarified this at the last meeting, is really a 2.15% increase before Correct. all the deductions. And then we got to 0.08. Uh, no. The CPI allowed for. Um, an increase of 0.12. No, but if you go from $180 million last year to $184 million this year, on that report card it said 2.15%. That that's the increase. That's the budget then, to budget increase right. for the expenditure budget. Then we take all those deductions and we got down to 0.08. No, that's a different thing. I believe that includes the, the state aid that was state. increased. The 0.08 is what the taxable levy is. Right. 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 Okay. So when your tax is what would be the 0.08, the total increase includes the state aid that was increased, which has nothing to do with taxes, just gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So now the 0.08, can I, I just want to know why we didn't go to zero. Why even 0.08? It's $98,000. Why did we do 0.08 instead of zero? Because if all things remain constant, there's a good chance that we could actually go negative next year. Okay. So it's But not with the New York State audit saying that we went over, we overtaxed our our taxpayers by 33 million in three years, going negative once or twice may not be such a bad idea. I mean, well, they also made other recommendations like paying down debt, which okay. is something we'll be doing in September. So that's why you left it at a week, so that we don't go negative next year. No, we, we still go negative next year. Oh, yes. All right. And then um, finally, the, the modules. Um, I, I've been at all the meetings, I reviewed some of the tapes, and, and we haven't talked really about the moving. I, I think we just found out at the last meeting that the modules were being used as a primary source. I think that's what you told us at the last meeting or the meeting before. Am I correct? Last year. Last year you said they were being used? That's the, the, we use the modules as a primary resource. Okay. okay. In grades K through 12, you know. Um, but teachers are allowed to supplement, and right. they do. We have professional development. So my, my question then would be for the board, um, we should, yeah, we, you should vote on then taking those modules and not using those, as makes sense. You have the you have five different people, you, had, you have a different person on the board now. I would bring that back up and say let's not use the, those modules. 75% of our students opted out. That means that we don't want to use those modules. So perhaps that should be revisited and said. Just, just to clarify, I'm sorry to interrupt you. The, the, you know, I think there's a difference between the refusals of the state assessments and the actual standards. Um, the district, we, you know, we did decide to move forward with the modules for a variety of reasons, um, as a, a resource for our teachers, a resource for our students. We have worked with our staff. They have done an amazing job um, throughout the school year and over the summer, creating feedback loops of things that are working, things that aren't working. Uh, we had a large team that worked last summer to redo the modules to make them uh, more ConnectBot friendly. I just don't um, think they should be the primary source. I, I understand. And we have heard those that echoed. And, and if you listen back to you know some of the recommendations that I made during the budget presentation time, we're putting, we want to hear the stakeholders 
points of view. Uh, Mr. Well, Grable Nick said it, brought him up pretty well tonight about Mr. Grable said it very well as far as making sure that the teachers have a voice in this. And that's something that we have tried to do in everything that we've done um, since my arrival here. Part of that process is, is getting together as a team and identifying what's working, what's not working, evaluating different resources that are available to us, and making a really good decision about what's best for our kids. That doesn't happen overnight. It's something that takes time, and it's something that we're going to invest the time in. We are committed to making sure that we have the best resources for our students. I'm best not saying that you're not, you're not doing that. No, I'm not saying that but I, I don't, I don't want to rush into something right. okay. because, you know, I, do I agree that the modules, you know, I, I'm, I don't have a preference as far as the modules. I'm not a module person or, you know, like or dislike. It's a, it's a resource that we have decided to use. We think it's in the best interest of our, of our district at this point. We have heard the complaints. We have heard the criticisms. We have, there are positives to it as well. You know, there's, a, there's maybe not an equal number, but there are positives to it. We want to make sure that all the stakeholders that are using the resources, our instructional staff and our administrators, have a voice as we move forward to look at other resources that are available. That. But I also, in my opinion, and from what I've read on the NISBA site, it is up to the board to direct to the superintendent how we want that to go. So if the board decides to remove those modules as a primary source, then, then we have if I'm wrong, correct me, but then the superintendent has to carry out what the board decided. All right, I'm sorry, I was talking about something different. I was talking more about just the research right, no, and I, itself right, and I, as I far got as that, the practice right. of the board. But in, in my understanding, the board directs to the superintendent, and then you send it down, to, down it, the line. It would be something that would be a goal. And one of the things that we do as a goal all the time is revamp and look at our curriculum. We spent thousands and thousands of dollars last summer with teams of teachers diving into the modules and rewriting the units to make them our own. We gave that a year of work with, with our teachers. I know that Dean is proposing curriculum writing again for the summer in both ELA and math. So these are things that we are evolving and making our own. And it's not something you want to throw out because we did have teachers spend a significant amount of time, effort, and energy right. making them better. Now, are they, are they the best they can be? No, absolutely not. And that's something that Dean has teams of teachers and administrators that work with. We, we spent a full year looking at literacy this year, and math will be our primary focus for next year. And you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but we did spend tens of thousands of dollars. Over a hundred thousand dollars. Writing curriculum last summer. That their, their kids are still, that's why we still have the opt out that we have. Parents are still saying that they don't like the modules, they don't like all this testing, and they don't want it. So the, the modules and the testing are separate things because the modules are designed to put the standards on the ground. Right. Now that our teachers are more aware of the standards across Long Island and across New York State, we can now really dig in and look at other things that will, will help our kids be better at the, at the new math and the way the new standards are. So, you know, I think Dean spent many, many hours, hundreds of hours, hundreds of thousands of dollars working with our teachers this summer with Bethany Rizzo, who did a whole lot of work with our modules this summer. Our, our new math director has been here since February. So these are the curriculum writing things that are, that are moving forward. You know, you're, you're looking at an adoption of a new social studies textbook. That probably will be something that we look forward to as a resource for our math models and math instruction moving forward. Instead of the, the Engage New York modules. That have already been modified. I'll also say this to the yes. board, to you five board members right now, is that you guys should direct this. That's that's your job. You direct which modules you want to use, whether it's a textbook or the modules as a primary source. And I hope that you have heard the parents, and I think most of you have, and, and you go forward with that. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. So I just need to say one word, and then Ms. Cabot needs to get up here. I'm going to cut right to the chase. You know, I'm, I don't... I don't uh, his words. Right? The reality of this whole situation and what these folks are talking about started two years ago. Okay, when Ms. Adams, you were hired, Mr. Middleman was hired, and you both came in, you being known as a module guru, common core guru, and that is the reason you were hired, because that's where the state was going. So let's not mince words here. For one full year, modules were the primary source of teaching kids in this district, and that came directly from the superintendent and from the assistant superintendent for curriculum. 
That's the bottom line. The only reason you started to make adjustments is because you saw it was failing and the pressure from the parents and the pressures, pressure from the teachers association made it very clear to you when we provided surveys to you about the teachers' feelings about modules and Common Core, okay, how terrible they were. And that's when you started to open up your eyes. And I do give Mr. Middleman credit, okay, for his efforts in working with the association. And yes, you did spend a lot of money, thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars wasted money because when you first came in, you forced the modules down our throats. That's the truth of the matter. Thank you. I appreciate that the modules were fixed up a little bit. There is more space in the math for young children to actually fit it in, and the spelling errors have been corrected. The font size and the general appearance and the content are still garbage. I don't mean insults to our teachers, but they are inappropriate for the age of the students. They look like college level papers. They are not at all appealing, motivating, interesting. They're still confusing. The language in the math module as a speech language pathologist, you have to have a speech language pathologist go over the math to make sure it is developmentally appropriate for what language skills they're able to do. I, I, it took me a while to gain my composure because for three years I have been standing here fighting against these modules. You might not have heard any of this because you're new, but for three years countless people have come up and talked about these modules. We have a district that is rip roaring crazy mad about this testing and for you to now go and add yet another test to fifth grade after my children have lost two weeks of instruction because of all the state testing they've had. My children have missed library, my children have missed music, my children have missed instrument practice, my children have missed sequest for two weeks. Basically, school seems to shut down. And now you're going to add yet another test to my fifth grader that I don't know about and that I don't see, and I won't probably get the scores for it. I don't feel like you're listening to the outrage in this community. I don't understand how we're saying stop the testing, and you're just going to plow on ahead and add another test to the fifth grade plate. I just, uh, it's appalling and unacceptable to me. And this module stuff has gone on for three years. So it's, it just can't be that we don't talk about it. Everybody's talking about it and something needs to happen. One other point, um, the movement to keep um, increasing the non-fiction um, materials. I understand you might need some nonfiction materials, but fiction has been thrown away. Thrown away. Creative writing in the ELA is gone. Yep. They have to write, their creative writing is to write like something that they experienced or did. That's not creative writing. Creative writing is creating what you want to write about. So the whole ELA, we're pushing further and further towards the non um, the nonfiction. It needs to be balanced. I'm not saying not do it, but it needs to be balanced, and we're only looking at half of what needs to happen. That other half, every time you're up one, the other half is going down. I really don't want to just keep coming here and beating a dead horse, but I feel like nobody's listening. The community is speaking very loudly, very, very loudly. I just wanted to report um, back to the board. Um, you've um, made an effort to um, make some teachers want to come here, to be able to hire um, so that it wouldn't be necessary for teachers to give up preps and et cetera. Um, we've changed the rates. I've changed them three times since the middle of January. Um, I can tell you I have not worked up any new employees. Um, it's the same. We're paying the ones who have been working with us since September. They're now making more money. I am still, um, don't mind the workload, don't mind it at all, um, still instructional staff, 
having to fill in um, to obviously their frustration as well. Um, and that being said, since we're having such a problem finding teachers and educators and people we can rely on that can bring a positive to connect by, it may just be people we know. It may be friends. It may be a neighbor. You know, this is a community. I'm going to tell you, most of the community here are our teachers here. They're our staff here. So to reach into this community and find other employees shouldn't be that unusual. And being that we're so short, having somebody come in, and I, don't, I have no personal interest in, I don't even live in this district, but I will tell you, having somebody we can count on, because I have the same 15 long-term subs all year taking on not one, not two, three assignments. I have clerical staff trying to fill 15 vacancies in a day. No subs, teachers absent. And yes, you're gonna have this frustration. And yes, we wanna educate the kids, but we may all have to reach and find people we know through friends, through family, whatever it takes. But the holes in education is, is a problem, like resources missing or library or music. So trying to argue about the little isn't solving the bigger problem to get the support we need for the kids. Okay? Thank you.